Hey everybody, I'm Rick. Welcome to Talking Habs. So the Habs destroy the Leafs in seven. And listen, I say destroy because if you look at all of the pundits in, I guess, mostly in Toronto, but all of the pundits, look at that. Not a one of them took the Habs in any way. It was all Leafs in anywhere from four to seven, and they all got it wrong except this guy here because what i did say was i think if the if toronto would win it would be in four maybe five i and then i said if for montreal it's going to take seven if they get to seven games they win and that's what happened so i'm patting myself on the back yay we won what a great game it, w it was just a great game by montreal now i knew they were going to win you know why because i do a guess the score contest and if you guess the score of the game and the first goal score of the game, you win the prize. And um, somebody entered that. I think a lot of you out there are going to say, wow, that's pretty amazing. And this person entered. I, I wrote it down here. And if you see the one highlighted, Jesus Christ picked the halves three to one. And he also shot his light down on Jake Evans. But Jake Evans did not get the first goal. So, um Jesus isn't perfect. All right, let's get into this game. Before we do, though, if you are a Habs fan like I am and you want to see more of these videos like this, come on, subscribe and ring that notifications bell, and you'll get notified of all my videos as they come out and get your daily fix of Blue Blanc Rouge right here at Talking Habs. Um, so let's get into this. As I said, I would like to share my screen with you but i forgot to set it up so if you give me a second and hopefully this won't backfire and it didn't so this is the game three to one win by montreal well let me get over there so a three to one win by montreal as you can see they had two goals in the second one in the third and maple leafs you know, they, they got a goal really uh, close to the end of the game. I said going into this game that if Montreal can either get a goal early in the first, which they did not, or hold them off as well, the longer they can go scoreless, the, the more that it gets into the Leafs' heads that they're, they're not going to win this game or they're choking or whatever, the curse, whatever you want to call it. And Montreal managed to pull that off. Shots on goal were 31 to 23 for Toronto um, in the uh, faceoff circle, virtually the same, 49 to 51% for Toronto. Uh, power play, Montreal got the only power play goal with their only power play, and they held Toronto off the uh off the score sheet on the power play. So Montreal special teams were in the end a little better than Toronto's. And when I, when the uh, playoff series was about to start, I said special teams could really be a big difference here and could, could actually make the difference. The team with the better special teams through the series could be the winner. And I think in the end, that's what it was. Um, hits in this game, Pretty even, 30 to, for Montreal, 32 for Toronto. I didn't find in this uh, game that Montreal needed to dominate them uh, physically uh, to the extent that they did in other games. So, um, yeah, because, you know, um, pretty much from the drop of the puck, I think. Uh, let me just read you what I wrote. Um, Toronto, uh, their nerves showed from the drop of the puck, uh, stick script too tight, bad passes, flub shots, all kinds of signs that the choke – was in their heads. And it's true. I mean, I think it's pretty clear that that was the case. Now, the goals came from Brendan Gallagher, his first from Stahl. That's at 302 of the second. And then Corey Perry uh, scoring one off the inner thigh. His second goal from Suzuki and Gustafson at 1525 of the second. That's the power play goal right there. And then uh, in the third, uh, an empty netter by Tyler Toffoli, his second from Stahl and Deneau. And then, like, with what? Uh, less than two minutes left. Uh, Nylander gets his fifth from Matthews and Spezza. And too little, too late by Toronto. And they were not able to overcome on this game. Let's see. Carey Price stopped 30 of 31 for a 968 save percentage. And Campbell, 20 of 22 for a 909 save percentage. And, I mean, there you go. That was the game. Um, let's go over what I thought about the game. Let me just uh, come back over here. Whoop, there we go. And remove the screen. All right. So what am I leading off with here? That's done. Um, oh, here's something I think is kind of um, – I, I don't know. I got a panel here. 
<laughs> Leafs fans have lost the chirping rights to uh, till their team fucking wins something first. I'm tired of every se- every beginning of the season. Leafs fans, oh, we're the best. We're going to win the cup. I mean, this season and leading up to it, that's what I heard all season. Them chirping at me. Oh, we're the better. You, you guys suck. You guys blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I don't know who sucks now. So no chirping rights. If it takes 10 years, you don't have chirping rights until your goddamn team wins something. Because I'm tired of hearing about it for a team that, guess what, in the end, weren't good enough. Number three on this list. Uh, what was number three? Um, uh, oh, the, just some interesting kind of little stats. And um, I think I had said that these might not mean anything, but it turns out that they kind of do. Um, well, this one is for me personally. A lot of people think the game three winner of this of a series goes on to win all the time. I've always found more often than not, the game five winner goes on to win the series and in this case, have staved off elimination. Game five went on to do the same in game six, and then uh, went on to um, the series win. Um, Montreal Toronto series game one winner goes on to win the series, and and finally, and and um, that happened in this because Montreal won in game one. But oddly, <laughs> the series winner has been has always gone on to win the Stanley Cup. When you consider that 1979 was last time that they there was a series between these two teams, I don't know that that really um, holds much water. So, but hey, I hope it does, and Montreal goes on to win the cup. That would be awesome. But I'm not going to count on that because that's kind of you know so far up. The league was really different then and before then. I I won't count on that. So um, even though these other two did sort of work out, and it's how many years later, I don't think the, going on to win the cup. Is the same thing at all. Okay, so um, there was kinds of, I said it, Montreal was built for the playoffs. Um, and as the season went along, eh, everyone went, yeah, okay, yeah, right, but you got to get to the playoffs. Well, they did that, and then getting into the playoffs, it didn't go well in the first four games, and it didn't look like that. But I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, this team is getting better as they go along, and I think that's how – a team built for the playoffs kind of does that, right? Now they may struggle early on against Winnipeg again and hopefully figure it out and maybe do the same thing. But this is a team that's built for the playoffs. They can play the physical game. They have enough skill to score a few goals. <laughs> I know that's probably – but they can. They can score a few goals. They have enough skill to shut down the opposition. Their special teams can play, and they've got depth. And then they've got that wall that is – Playoff carry price, and you know I think that um, they're built for the playoffs, and hopefully we're going to see that in the Jet series. Now I wrote something that I want to read to you. It's kind of a little eloquent piece. I hope it's eloquent. I wrote it, so I don't know. Maybe I'm biased on that, but I think it sums it up what this series for me um, kind of was. Um, so if we take out Game One, the Game One win, and I think we should take it out because of the Tavares injury. We're left with two sets of three very different games from set one to set two. Um, In the first set, Toronto rallied for their fallen captain and displayed their dominance with skill and offense, while Montreal tried to hang on for dear life. Literally, without Carey Price, the series was over. Probably would have been... If, if not for the Tavares injury in game one, it would have been over in four. That's what it looks like, right? Uh, uh, well, Montreal tried to hang on for their life. There you go. So, then suddenly, when faced with elimination, backs against the wall, Montreal figures it out, turns it around, and like a cornered animal, the team scratched and clawed punched and brawled their way out of the hole they put themselves into. And with force of will, dominant physical play, and the wall that is playoff carry price, they ground Toronto down into a a reflection of who they, the Montreal Canadiens, were in games two, three, and four. And in doing so, slew the dragon that was the Toronto Maple Leafs. And that's kind of what it was, right? Toronto came out, 
first four games. If you take out the first game, right, they, those three games that they won, I mean, they dominated. Definitely the two games in Montreal. And then Montreal f- somehow found enough to slay that dragon, David and Goliath. And um, Toronto, I think, may not be the same again until they can figure out how to win. Because they can no longer go around and say they are the best and they're this and they're because they're not and they can't do it and they've proven it time and time again and they're going to need to win something one round before they can do any kind of chirping about how they how, what their chances are. That's my opinion. It's been so many years and so many failures and you can't do it anymore. Now Montreal along the way has still won their you know a few series, gotten somewhere so. You know, there has been a little bit of success there compared to Toronto. Toronto cannot do that anymore. I decree. Gavel banged. Uh, Let's see. This was the best team game Montreal's played all season. Everyone showed up and was at the top of his game. That's my opinion on that. And just another little... Uh, this is one of the reasons why I think that Toronto kind of, this might be one of the reasons. Austin, uh, Austin Matthews just, he didn't look the same from game one to game seven, right? I mean, literally, look at that bit. He didn't look the same. Um, <laughs> I love that picture. I don't know where was I now. Ah! Uh, Toronto's nerves showed from the drop of the puck. I think I read this earlier, but stick grip too tight, bad passes, flub shots, and all kinds of signs that the choke was in their heads. And, you know, people were saying at the beginning in my uh, pregame show and the little chat before the game actually started that they expect Toronto to come out, throw everything they had, everything, just come out flying and, and tr- you know, and, and so – when when the game started, I had been talking a little too long. I missed the first two minutes of the game, but I don't think that happened in the first two minutes. And then what I saw happening was I said, if this is all, if this is everything Toronto has, and they're throwing everything they have at Montreal, they don't have much. And they don't have it tonight. And you could see it. It wasn't any dominance on Toronto's part. It was kind of a flowing back and forth game. And every time Toronto tried, like, passes, they missed passes. The passes were off. They couldn't carry the puck without losing the puck. Montreal was able to get their sticks in the way, poke the puck away, um, sticks in, in the way of the passes, whatever. They couldn't get anything going. They weren't out playing Montreal in any way, and it wasn't to say Montreal dominated them because they kind of really didn't until the third period, I thought. Uh, but they, they were physically dominant, and... You know, not in the same as the first other, the first couple of games. I get that, but it still was there. T- Toronto had nothing. As as the game went on, it was less and less, and choke and choke and choke was in their head. That's what I believe. That's what I saw. I that's what I saw. Montreal sticks everywhere, especially you see it in the third period. Sticks were everywhere, blocking everything, and what did get through to the player. They couldn't mount anything with. It was it was a, a great performance by uh, by Montreal. Execution, perfectly executed game, I think, by the players. Was it a perfectly coached game? I don't know, really. They say that, um, I've heard a few people say since, that was the first time we really saw a Dominic Ducharme coach. Okay, that was great. But I'm going to tell you, it was a perfectly executed game. Let me say near perfectly executed game by Montreal. They didn't allow Toronto anything. Um, Here's something. And I think this is going to happen. Marner's going to be a scapegoat. Um, If you see online, I love this, though. Me crying over a game. My friend's concerned for my well-being. That was from game six, I do believe. After that game six, if you saw his Twitter account feed... um, I mean, everybody is coming down on Marner. I think the team is going to allow that because maybe they can get away with just having to move Marner and not have to do a whole rebuild because there's going to be a lot of call for changes in Toronto, and Marner's going to be the scapegoat. My prediction is Marner gets traded and maybe more guys, and there will be guys not coming back, and and there will be moves, but of the big 
three players there, four with you include um Nylander. Marner, I think, gets traded. I think Anderson also will get traded. Can't blame Jack Campbell here. I thought Jack Campbell did a great job. Um, I wouldn't if I'm a at least fan, I don't I don't blame Campbell here. I thought Campbell did well. Uh he's still so young, he doesn't make a lot of money. And uh, I thought he was a good, consistent performer for them all season. If you got you find a guy like Jack Campbell, you keep him. You know, you're not get, you're not making him the scapegoat. That's my opinion. Let's see what else I got. Well, I wanted to, tonight's lineup for the game. Oh uh, no, that's for the next video. I guess I shouldn't get into that right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me see where I am. Um, I got the schedule for the next game. Talked about. Oh well, let's. The reason I say for Marner, I guess I, I wanted to say this. If you look after game six, like I don't even know how this guy was expected to perform in game seven because if you looked at his twi Twitter and what they said to him, this kid had to be demoralized, completely demoralized. And whether you think that's right or wrong, I don't think it's right. Um, if I'm the kid, I want out too because of what was said and what they're – apparently continuing to say and i think it's horrible i hope i never see that at, from Habs fans to our players this is horrible the way they came down on their players on social media after game six how do you expect those guys to go out and and play for you there were fans in the stands there they must have come out and go like what like i'm gonna play for you guys after what you guys said to me, no way. I I think that had something to do with it. I said it before the game, uh, in my game, my video before the game, and I think that had a lot to do with it. I really do. Um, so I guess that brings us to uh, the schedule for the next uh, series. So uh, we won, we won, yay! So Montreal gets to go on meet uh, uh, Winnipeg. Um, it starts tonight. This is um, Wednesday night, June second. And uh, there's no time to, to rest for Montreal. They're in the second round. And it's a rested Jets team. They've had eight days of rest, uh, which could work against them. And this is the schedule. I've got it here for you. And then I'll talk about them in a preview that I'm going to do next. So tonight, 7.30 in Winnipeg. Um, on Friday, 7.30 in Winnipeg. On Sunday, 6 o'clock in Montreal. And Monday. Now, 8 o'clock in Montreal is what the NHL website says. So I'm going to go with that. But I've seen it in other places where it's 7. And then I saw somewhere it's Tuesday. So the NHL page has 8 p.m. Mon uh, in Montreal on the 7th. So those are back-to-back -back games. Once again, first two games in Montreal back-to-back. -back. On the 9th, no times announced in Winnipeg. On the 11th, no times announced in Montreal. And the same thing. 13th, no times announced, and again in Winnipeg. All those games are if necessary, if there isn't a sweep. And, uh, yeah, that's the schedule for the next series. Um, I think that's it. Thanks, everybody. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, anything you want to say in the comments section, I'd appreciate that. Don't leave a guess for the guest to score contest for the Winnipeg game because – I'm going to be doing a preview for that. So just uh, you just got to look for that. And um, that's it. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Ring the notifications bell. That'll get you your daily fix of Blue Blonde Rouge right here at Talking Habs. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay safe out there. Peace out. And go, Habs, go! Let's kick some Jets' ass in Winnipeg. Let's do it, boys. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Enjoy the day and see you on the preview.